When you open a simulation, make sure that you use the HTML5 version. The um, Java simulation is a little bit different. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change the um, source of oscillation right here to oscillate. And you're going to also want to change the end over here to no end. Additionally, there's some damping involved, which is why the amplitude is changed down here at the end. So we want to change the damping to none. And you can also adjust the tension between high and low. Um, I'm just going to leave it set at high at the moment. I can also change the amplitude of the wave, which is basically how high this is going to go up and down. And the amplitude can be adjusted over here. So I can make it a really large amplitude or a very small amplitude. We're going to set our amplitude between 70, uh, 0.75 centimeters and 0.8. So I'm going to set it at 0.75. Centimeters. You can also adjust it with the little um, arrows. To do this particular simulation, I'm going to set the frequency at 120. So I can set it um, you know, at 120. I could also adjust it to other values. So now I'm actually ready to start taking data. I'm going to pause the simulation for the moment. I'm going to add in the rulers and the timer. I don't really care so much about the, the ruler on the left, but I do care about the horizontal ruler. The dotted line through here is the equilibrium position, and I want to take my ruler and place it at the equilibrium position. And I want to have it such that um, it's going to be zeroed right at that equilibrium position, and that's where the, the um, source of oscillation is going to go up and down at the zero position. Once I have it set up, I can go ahead and play and make sure that it's going through that position. I can also do slow motion, which I can see it a little bit better with the slow motion, and it is going through the zero right here. I can then pause it, and my goal first is to measure the wavelength of the wave, which is the distance between successive crests of the wave or successive troughs of the wave. So I'm going to step this forward when it's um, paused. I can step it forward until the source of the oscillation, the green dot here, is right at the zero. The green dots are really not that relevant in here, so don't think that you have to really take note of those. But um, what I do want to do is I want to measure one complete cycle and what the length of that cycle is, and that will tell me the wavelength. So if I just follow along, here's the, the starting point, and I want to go until the wave would repeat itself. So it would come down like this, it would come back up like this, and then when I get back down to the equilibrium position here, the wave has gone through one complete cycle. And if I continue, I will be going down again. So one complete, complete wavelength would be the distance from my starting point and then coming along here until the wave gets back to the equilibrium position, which would be right here, whoops, which is about 5.2 centimeters. So that's how I would measure the wavelength. Now, when I want to measure the period of the wave, I have to time how long it takes this source of oscillation to go through one complete cycle, which would be going all the way up, all the way back down, and then coming back to this position. Or depending on where the, the uh, source of the oscillation is, it might go all the way down, come all the way back up, and then get to that position. So while it's still paused, I'm going to go ahead and play the timer. It doesn't start because the simulation is paused, but as I step it forward, and the source of the oscillation begins to go up, and the timer go, goes ahead and starts. So I want to go all the way up. I'm going to do normal so it'll go a little faster. All the way up, all the way back down, and then coming back to where we started. I went a little bit far, but um, so my timer, my time here for the period would be about 0.84 seconds. And that's how you would measure the period. And then you can, um, you can hit play if you want to see what the motion is like. You can adjust the frequency to different values. Um, and then you can measure the, the amplitude, or not the amplitude, the wavelength and the period again. Every time you want to use the timer, you have to hit the reset button. And you have to hit play when you're ready to go. So if I was going to do this one, I would want to get it into position. I could measure the wavelength. This wavelength is a little bit less than the one before. The frequency went up the wavelength went down, and then I could measure the period by going ahead and stepping it forward, which I'm not going to go all the way through, but that's how you would do it.